episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of our show, bringing you another really fascinating guest today, uh, helping to create a, a better tomorrow uh, on many different fronts. Uh, today, we have the uh, opportunity. We are uh, virtually traveling over to uh, Singapore, uh, and we're going to be meeting today uh, with Jack Sim, who is the founder of the World Toilet Organization, uh, an organization that was established ultimately with the aim to uh, break the tab taboo around toilets and this major sanitation crisis uh, that we're facing around the world where we still have about two and a half billion people uh, on this planet that do not have access access to toilets or latrines, a billion that have to defecate still in the open and around 10% of the world it is estimated still consumes food that is irrigated by raw wastewater. Uh, Mr. Sim is also uh, the founder of the Restroom Association of Singapore, uh, the World Toilet Day Initiative, and uh, the bottom of the Pyramid Hub. Uh, in 2001, um, he received the Schwab Foundation Award for Social Entrepreneur of the Year. In 2004, he was awarded the Singapore Green Plan Award by Singapore's National Environmental Agency. Uh, and in 2006, was invited to launch the German Toilet Organization in Berlin. He's also a founding member of the American American Restroom Association. Uh, in 2007, he became one of the key members uh, to convene the Sustainable Sanitation Alliance, uh, comprising over 130 organizations that are active in the sanitation sector. He's also uh, an Ashaka Global Fellow, uh, was named here by the Environment by Time Magazine, and sits on the World Economic uh, Forum's Global Agenda Council for Water Security, uh, Social Entrepreneurship. Uh, a lot to discuss here, but um, Jack Sim, welcome to the show today. Yes. Thanks for inviting me. It's uh, it's great to have you. Um, you know, I'd like to start things off uh, really by handing things over to you for a little bit to to talk about your background. Uh, you know, you were very active in the business world, but then uh, you embarked on this journey uh, to uh, fight for the rights and dignity and health in this area that not a lot of people have been focusing on. Take us through a little bit of the, the early journey of how you you decided to get involved in this space. Uh <laughs> So basically, I'm always um, wondering what's the purpose of life. And because I have no religious affiliation, I have to find something that is uh, purposeful. And I started to think, how long does a person live? So we live around 80 years of useful life. And after that, we become very frail. Some don't survive very long after that. And so we eventually die. And if we were to come here and go, what do we leave behind? And I think uh, making money is only enough for us to sustain our purpose and if we don't have a purpose then the default will be having a family and uh, raising some children and have a good relationship with the, the wife and friends that would be the basic but uh, if we want to do more we got to find the most difficult problem in the world and go out to solve it so since there's only one chance and only one life why don't do the most difficult one and <laughs> Toilets, sanitation, shit, poop. These are all root words and very embarrassing to discuss. And because of its nature, uh, people don't want to talk about it. And then you can't solve any problem that you don't discuss. So the accumulation of this problem created um, two and a half billion people who don't have toilet. Today it's down to two billion, but still a lot. Uh, of course, at the time when we first started the World Toilet Organization, the 2.6 billion people who don't have toilet in 2001, and the world population was 6 billion people. Now there's 7.88 billion people, and the number has gone down to two. So back and forth, we 
can see that about 2.4, 2.5 billion people, new people, has gained access to proper sanitation. And uh, of course, half of that wouldn't, wouldn't have toilet if not because of the awareness that is created. And uh, how do we create the awareness? We have to engage the media in a way that it goes very, very viral and very, very deep. Mm -hmm. And so we did all kinds of um, publicity stunt, so much so that people think that I was just uh, trying to catch attention for myself and it was just a clown trying to make people laugh. But actually, when people laugh, they start to listen and then they listen to the serious things about not having a toilet because most of the people that we reach out, they have a toilet, mm -hmm. but they didn't know other people don't have a toilet. And so once they start to realize that, then a lot of action happens. You ask the government, why is it that the poor, the people in the slums, the people in the rural area, very urban area, where do they have no toilet? And so when the media drives the awareness, the awareness drives demand. And demand drives supply. And the supply comes from politicians. And the politicians then see that people want to have toilet. And if they give them toilet, they would win elections. So the politician can get power and, and popularity by delivering toilet now that there's so much uh, demand and so much awareness which is caused by the media. And so this chain reaction goes on until uh, um, Prime Minister Modi of India builds uh, 110 million toilets and President Xi Jinping became now the toilet champion for China toilet revolution. And last year, in Brazil, we managed to change the law to, for private partnership in, into uh, investing into Brazil government's uh, water treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. And we lobbied the Senate in Brasilia. We have a World Toilet Summit in Sao Paulo. And then and seven months later, the bill was passed. And now $13 billion of Chinese investment went into Brazil's sewage treatment plant. So this kind of uh, policy influence work, advocacy work, they go very, very far. And mm -hmm. so what we are very happy is that after 13 years, in 2013, the United Nations actually adopted our founding day, 19th of November, as the official UN World Toilet Day. And this was unanimously agreed and approved mm -hmm. by 193 countries member of the UN. It's a very rare occasion that the UN members agree on something unanimously. Sure. And, and when it comes to pilot, they agree. So we're very happy that uh, from taking up the subject, calling ourselves the World Pilot Organization with the acronym of the WTO, mm -hmm. we were able to effect the change and the attention on, on a subject called sanitation, which before that, they were calling it water. And can you imagine if someone says water agenda, he means water and sanitation nonsense, right? He just say water and it means water. So we decouple sanitation from water and we're very proud that uh, we've created a movement that everybody's involved and it belongs to everyone. Thank you. Outstanding, outstanding. And, and to, you know, underneath the... Um... Uh, the, the umbrella of the World Toilet Organization, you, you created something called the World Toilet College. Talk a little bit about what that specific aspect of the organization is focused on. So in order to have clean toilet, you need to have toilet cleaners and you need to have sanitation workers who are professional. And so we created the World Toilet College and we first started in Singapore. And then we created now six of them in India and we train in uh, workers from unskilled into professional toilet cleaners and, and general cleaners. 
and we place them into jobs. So we've uh, placed now about 7,500 workers into jobs. And uh, that's only from the, the first one. And now we've grown another five. So we think that uh, we will uh, increase those training per year by fivefold. And, you know, a very you know, interesting, obviously, uh, as you said at the beginning, we use uh, words like poop and shit <laughs> to, to describe uh, what we're dealing with here in terms of uh, this vast amount of waste. Um, and, and clearly, once uh, the World Toilet Organization accomplishes, you know, getting taking care of the additional two billion uh, people that don't have toilets. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, possibilities beyond that. Uh, obviously, you know, we talked about uh, on a previous episode this principle of the, of the sanitation economy. Uh, there's amazing technologies in terms of new toilet technologies and so forth that are on the horizon. What are the interesting? What, what excites you about you know once we get past this <laughs> these these hurdles and you're doing an amazing job there in, in getting toilets toilets out there in the first place? Uh, what else excites you in sort of the next wave? What's coming? in terms of the sanitation economy, the sanitation technologies? I think that the future of toilet would be preventive health because in the toilet, you download a lot of your personal health data through your poops and through your pee. And if we can capture all this data individually through some um, um, biometrics, then we will be able to to um, prevent all kinds of diseases that you don't know is happening in your body, but your poop and your pee was able to tell. And we should do this in a non-intrusive manner so that we do not have to take samples. So we can do it through smell, through um, spectral cameras, through all kinds of diagnosis. And then if we interpolate this information, I think one day, the toilet can replace uh, at least 50% of all the hospitals that is needed because if you prevent, it's much cheaper than cure. Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent point. And, we, and I've been watching sort of the uh, the scientific literature about uh, about some of these tools for diagnostics in the home. We think obviously about blood, but as you're saying, there's a tremendous resource in poop, in pee. Uh, we get rid of every day, but uh, if we can analyze that via some of these new tools, these digital health tools, artificial intelligence, uh, we can really learn about uh, a lot about ourselves just in our home. Um, uh, Jack, the other interesting thing that um, uh, you've been involved in, you, you founded an organization, as I mentioned at the beginning, called uh, Bottom of the Pyramid Hub. Uh, it focused on, on creating a, a group of social businesses and startups, uh, really looking to uh, transform, uh, you know, we have 4 billion plus uh, poor in the world today, uh, and, and, you know, you wanted to create a, a new marketplace focused on them and helping to end global property. What is the bottom of the Pyramid Hub all about? Talk a little bit about that part of your story. So I met President Clinton some about 10 years ago, and he told me that um, all the solutions to end poverty has already been found. It's just that nobody goes and collect all the ideas and replicate them because whether it is about water or sanitation or agriculture or housing or healthcare or edu uh, uh, agri tech, uh, fintech, microfinance, housing, you know, all the solutions, somebody have already solved it. And if somebody have already solved it, then why do we... Um, keep on having new people doing new things when the old things or the established things, proven things, are not yet fully recycled. So what I set out to do with the BOP hub is to create a World Trade Center for the poor. Right now, I have created a build, this building in Singapore of 65,000 square foot building mm -hmm. with $10 million, costing myself $10 million, uh, to coordinate the collaboration and partnership 
of all stakeholders across sectors, across uh, government, NGOs, social entrepreneurs, technology, universities, media, multilaterals, UN system, and companies, and investors. And we create startups that are integrative, and we persuade people that if they go faster, cheaper, better, easier, the only way is to go together with other people. So we try to uh, take over the gaps of government failure, market failure, and also NGO failure and charity industries failure. And where this is still not solved, the most efficient way to get people out of poverty is by empowering them with skills, with access to market, with access to technology and access to investment and training. And then they can get out of poverty all by themselves. Excellent. Uh, what's, what's next? Uh, we're coming up to 2022. Um, what's next uh, that we need to know that Jack Sim is going to be up to? Uh, where are you going to be speaking? What should we be looking at uh, and following you uh, into the next year? Mm, next year, there will be a series of movies made about my stories. Okay. And hopefully it goes onto Netflix with a mini series episode of dramatized story. Uh, meanwhile, I'm creating uh, a book uh, about a new economic model for the world so that we do not have to continue the consumption growth model. And this book will become a training teaching curriculum uh, for many, many universities. And it will also be converted into a film, which is both dramatized and entertaining, as well as uh, part of the curriculum used as edutainment. Mm -hmm. So lots of uh, exciting things are happening. Uh, right now in World Expo in Dubai, uh, I'm uh, featured in the Katia Women's booth, and I hope to fly there and and visit them uh, once the restrictions are lifted. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well, we'll definitely be keeping uh, an eye out on you and, and everything that you're doing because it really is fascinating and you're doing an amazing job uh, in getting the word out and breaking the stigma and, and, and increasing access and, and possibilities, which is so exciting. Um, really fascinating stuff, Jack. Um, for everybody that's uh, going to be uh, watching this episode uh, on our YouTube channel or listening uh, on uh, the various podcasts, you've been listening to Jack Sim, uh, founder of the World Toilet Organization, the World Toilet College, Restroom Association of Singapore, World Toilet Day, Bottom of the Pyramid Hub, uh, also founding member of the American Restroom Association. Uh, Jack, thanks so much. I know it's late there. Thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to come talk to us for a little while. Uh, and thanks for everything you're doing. And as we say on our show, uh, thank you for helping to create a better tomorrow for many people. Really wonderful story. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.